Good afternoon. So this is a uh, somewhat belated uh, President's News uh, as far as social media is concerned uh, this week. But it's so to take the opportunity just to come down to the track again and have another look at how the um, how the building, the new sports centre behind me here is getting on. And uh, I'll try and tack on to the end of this uh, video uh, 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 a clip of more detailed uh, look at it although we can't get inside work is going on you can probably tell that from the uh, from the noise we can hear um, but anyway before we do that let me just go through what's been a pretty busy week uh, overall sports wise first of all we had the UK championships up at uh, Manchester and the club had an amazing number 25 athletes competing across the events and we got six medals which was really really excellent so um, and the other thing, of course, is we got Dina and Adam both selected for the British team for the uh, World Championships. So that was great. So just looking at uh, looking at the results, uh, first of all, in terms of gold medals uh, in the javelin, both James Whitaker won the men's and Becca Walton won the ladies, um, both uh, doing very healthy throws. We had a silver for Dina, who is probably a lot of you already seen, was just pipped uh, to, the, to the post in the... Um, in the 100 meters and there were bronze medals for Kalechi Ugucha in the high jump with a 2 meters 18 and Divine Oladipo with 17.20 in the shot uh, and in addition we had a great new uh, PB of 20.40 for Geriel Equiano uh, who in the 200 meters beat Adam uh, back into fifth place. Another point to mention up there is Bailey Stickings ran a superb 50.32 in qualifying for the 400 metres hurdles final and in doing so he beat a club record which goes back to 1994 of 50.7. So he was just under that and uh, he, he had a pretty good run in the final where he achieved sixth. Dan Putnam, now Dan's run for the 400 metres in 47 seconds something of over 50 times and in qualifying he ran and broke the magical 47 second barrier at 46.75 uh, and he made the final where he placed sixth so uh, well done him. Uh, the full result or a more comprehensive report on the results of the UK champs is, um, is on the club website and the, under, the, under the press release. Um, closer to home we had on Saturday we had a Kent um, Young Athletic League match uh, this was for the, the lower age group, the under 13s and the under 15s um, and we came a, a second in that match just behind Tunbridge, 537 points against their 564 and a half. Um, notable performances, um, the under 13 boys had a, a very close race with Tunbridge in the 4x100 metres relay and just won that by 0.1 of a second. In the under 15s, Alexander Murrell took the 100 metres uh, and Charlie Platt won the javelin and we won both the 4x100 and the 4x300 relays, which was great performances. In the under 13s, the girls, uh, Heidi Coulson won the 70 metres hurdles, Amelia DC won the shot and we won the 4x100 metre relay pretty comfortably. In the under 15 girls, Shizam Boniface narrowly won the 100 metres, Erin Simpson won the discus and in the relays we won the 400, 4x300 four quite comfortably and in the 4x100 we were given a third place in a very close finish. We, we had the same time as the second place uh, team and that was just 0.1 of a second behind the first place team so that, that was a, a very close result. So that was Saturday. On Sunday we were at Woking where we had the National Youth Development League. Um, now that was interesting in a number of respects. I've talked on a number of occasions on the news about how the athletes are flexible and, and show their adaptability in appearing in events which aren't perhaps their first events and how people have to fill in and help the team out. Well on, on Sunday the parents were demanded to do something a bit extra because the coach never turned up. So 8.30 Sunday morning just outside the track here, uh, there was uh, there were two boys and girls teams of athletes all ready to go, under 20s and under 17s and no coach. Parents all rallied round in their cars and we got the team over there in, um, in, uh, in the nick of time. So that was good and it was worth it. It was the third uh, round of the YDL and the, for, we won the match again for the third, that's the third in a row. We, we finished with 620 points. Uh, second place was Windsor, Slough, Heaton, and they had 502 points. So uh, 
we're well placed now for the national finals with just one, uh, one match to go. So just a few highlights. Uh, in the under 20s, Cleo Agapong uh, celebrated. Uh, he had a new PB in the shot, breaking the 15 meter barrier. Well done, Cleo. And he was also second in the discus, so that was good. In the javelin, Peanut Meekings won the A-string javelin. Uh, Tiana Haynes took the double in the 100 and 200 meter sprints. Zach Mossy took the 400. Lara Menez took the 800. Abby Barnes won the 1500 meters. And in all those events, we also had excellent performances in the B-string races. So thanks and congratulations to all those athletes. Uh, we finished off the meeting in style uh, with wins um, at that age group for the 4x100 meter relay and the 4x400 meters. So that was the older age group. In the under 17s, they also had some excellent results. Nina Witter took the 100 meters. Uh, Jody Self continued her unbeaten run, took the 80 meter hurdles. Uh, Amber Coburn won the 1500 meter steeplechase. Uh, so again, we rounded off that with another fine win, the under 17s uh, ladies with a 4x100 meter uh, relay win. Moving up to the men's, um, and first of all, thanks to Nick Corrie, who stood in for Ian Furler and team managed for the day. Ian was away at a multi-event meeting at Crawley, and that did impact some of the uh, strength of some of our team in some of the throws and jumps. But anyway, we press on. So in the under 20s, uh, in the 100 meters, Zach Nuo Gugu, and Zach, apologies if I got your name wrong, he won the A race, and he followed this up with a second in the 200 meters. One thing to note, it was very blustery wind at Woking. So whilst some performances would have been wind assisted, most were probably um, were made more difficult by the wind. And in fact, there was an issue that the um, combination of the wind and the sound level of the starting gun, uh, particularly in a race like the 400 meters, the people in the outside lane just couldn't hear the starting gun. So that caused a, a, few, a few issues as the race, as the meeting went on. Um, looking at back to the results though, um, Thomas Sugden again comfortably won the 800 metres. Uh, other performances to note, Regan Lawrence who got stuck in traffic and he arrived literally minutes before the start of the 110 metres hurdles, uh, then managed to not only run it but achieve a PB and second place, so well done Regan. George Shaw, as another story worth noting, he stepped in to run the 400 metre hurdles with strict, in, strict instructions to take it easy because he was also scheduled to run in the 1500 metres and the 4x400 metres. So taking it easy, he jogged round and achieved second place. So well done, George. Uh, the pole vault was interesting. Ben Platt fighting these dangerous windy conditions. At one stage, I saw him virtually well he i think he took the sidebar rather than the crossbar off on the pole vault as he was blown sideways and only just managed to to land on the mat anyway he he came a joint second and as well as that ben, ben placed third in the javelin um the throwers did pretty well uh dillis uh, Clayton and bright bryden duncan dylan was second in the a string for the shot and the discus and bryden won the b b string in both the shot and the discus and came second in the hammer and finally, the under-20s, their relay squad uh, won the 4x100 comfortably and the 4x400 had a similar uh, e uh, easy win. So they were good results. The under-17 uh, men, uh, again, good placings in the sprint. Um, it's in, it was an interesting meeting in that we didn't have that many outright wins, but we had an awful lot of good placings. And as you saw, we won by, by quite a margin. So. Um, most of those most of those results are, are on the uh, website now. There are press reports from for both the boys and the girls teams there. Um, one point that would that what is worth noticing in the men's under 17s, Felix McArdle Hodge he won the A string javelin with a throw of over 57 meters, which for an under 17 is uh, very good going. So that was um, that was the YDL on Sunday. Uh, last night, down at Becker Hamians, we had the uh, Paris Handicap, and uh, this is a, a 5k uh, handicap race, um, well organised by Dick Griffin. Uh, so, fastest on the day was John Cleary in 1752, but first on handicap was Matt Bullen, who'd really managed to 
pull the wool over the handicapper's eyes. And he was followed by Matthew Maddox, just a few seconds behind, and then Sheridan Morris. So um, there were quite a few people who were running that for the first time. They hadn't been in previous rounds of the Parish Handicap, which is a monthly race. So the positions on the overall leaderboard are, are basically unchanged. So that was the Paris Handicap. Um, the, the final thing to mention in terms of athletic activities is, uh, is first of all, looking at Strava and see who's run the furthest this week. And again, it was Phil Sessaman clocked over 130 miles. Uh, behind him was Martin Richardson, 71 miles, and then Roger Villadell with 66. Notice there are 54 club members who recorded runs on Strava uh, last week. Uh, turning to Park Run, we had 40 runners in Park Run at uh, 22 different venues. So in terms of first place finishes, Mika Evans at, uh, at Bromley, Caris Firth at Lullingston, and I think, her, I think it's probably her dad, Gregory, who was just ahead of her, was the second man home. Um, Robert Perry won at Rushmore, which is up near Leighton Buzzard, and Christina Gelodi Johnson uh, won at Marlborough Common again. Now, some honourable mentions in the, um, in the in the park run: Zoe Kingsmill was fifth at Slurrock, at South Norwood, just down the road. Clayton Aves came second, with Paul Sharp uh, close behind him in third place. Jessica Keane had a third at Eastbourne, and um, Jackie Montgomery was seventh at a. Uh, a park run called Ankham Valley Way, which is up near Scunthorpe somewhere. Uh, and finally at Bromley, it's worth mentioning, Megan Barlow was third and Katie Sugden was fourth. So well done, ladies. Um, as I said last night at the club, rather tediously, I have to report that John Isaac set yet another overage age category record at Dartford Heath, where he achieved uh, a time of 29 minutes dead, which was three minutes faster than the, than the previous record. So that's that's the athletic results. Now I'm going to uh, cut off now. I'm going to go over and I'm going to do a, shoot a little, a, a few clips, a little bit closer to the development, and uh, I will then post this up. And I look forward to talking to you all next week. Thank you. Right. So this is your bonus add-on to the president's news. Um, a lot of people, or some people, have said to me that they didn't even know you could get into the track from the car park. They thought it was all shut off. So this is the end of the car park, which is all closed off on that side for the builders and on the far side here where I am this is the entrance to the track track office on the right and uh, changing and um, toilet accommodation on the left so we'll just take a, a walk through um, which I try and do that tripping over so you can see it's a slightly torturous routine but quite manageable We, uh, the old entrance has been widened a bit. Chipping's put down so that we can walk without getting too muddy. And you can already see the beginnings of the construction ahead of me. Um, see how it looms up. So this is probably where the old boundary was. So it'll, it'll pretty much dominate the entrance as you come into the track. Um, we just continue strolling through to the track and then we'll take a look back at the, at the facility. So here we are, the track as it always was and fortuitously, or thanks to the cooperation of the builders, we've been able to keep it open throughout the construction period so far. Now, here you can see the building is obviously topped out. If you've looked at the Norman Park website, you'll see pictures of the solar panels on the roof, but it's topped out and um, they are just started to put, so the bottom floor, as you can see, is bricked in so we've got that's all being completed and then there's cladding for this top floor which they're just starting to put on now they started putting that on today but unfortunately they started round the back and I can't get round the back to uh, to show you that but uh, you can see the full length of the building which goes down probably halfway down the hundred meters straight so it still leaves plenty of room for the officials and finishers and timekeepers. Um, the top area, particularly down this end, will will form a bit of a grandstand and there'll be a bar and cafeteria there. Um, then we have other multi-use rooms here. And downstairs will be changing accommodation, the sports hall, uh, the multi-gym and, uh, and, and the offices. So as you can see, it's coming along well. Um, not 
without problems, but they're all being managed. Um, the only thing we could do with a bit of help of so we can kit it out in an appropriate manner and so that we can uh, kit and so that we can kit it out without having to, to, to borrow any money would be anyone who's got a few hundred thousand pounds lying around just to finish things off that would be appreciated but as you can see great progress and um, when we I'll come back and do another shot when there's some more cladding up and it'll start to look uh, more like the finished thing although there'll still be quite a bit to do inside and I guess at the moment we're thinking probably completion will be in the autumn sometime October optimistically maybe November maybe otherwise so uh, trust you find that interesting I'll give you another catch up soon